It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. Good Monday morning. It is October the 7th. October. <laughs> oh, I'm in a good mood. We had a great weekend, but let's not dawdle. Let's get right into your top five at six. Let's get your week, uh, if not just your day off, on the right foot. What a weekend it was. Uh, The Minnesota Gophers reported nine injuries after the game on Saturday. Oh, not to players, but to fans. (laughs) How did the fans get hurt? Oh, that's right. They stormed the field after the Gophers beat the Southern Cal Trojans. What sort of world are we living in? I know. Up is down. Down is up. Cats and dogs living together. That's a big win for that program. A lot of fun. I'm glad they were able to do it here. I'm still trying to make sense of USC being in the Big Ten. And meanwhile, the Gophers are like, welcome to Dinky Town. You mind your dinks? Go back to Southern Cal. (laughs) Uh, PJ Fleck, the guy gets grief a lot for never going for it and not being gutsy enough. Uh, They went for it. Um, They powered into the end zone from the one-yard line with less than a minute to go. Third rushing touchdown for Mac Brosmer. And I loved, after the game, PJ Fleck said, well, how often do you get a chance to, how often do you have an inch to go beat USC? It's right. good philosophy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's fantastic, man. Um, but again, nine people suffered minor to moderate injuries in the crowd rush. Shake it off. Yeah, that's right. Rub some dirt on it. <laughs> they got turf toe. That's, a, <laughs> that's most likely exactly what it was. Uh, but that's a, that's a great win for the Gophers. Go, yeah, go, is. Gophers, Gophers, go, Gophers, go. <laughs> Number four in your top five and six. Uh, Midwestern boomer women are not interested in your cloning technology. Uh, noted. What? <laughs> One of me is enough. <laughs> what? A new poll is out. If you could clone yourself, would you do it? Um, boomer women say, no, sir, absolutely not. That is the demographic who wants the least amount of human cloning, just in case you're wondering. All right. Well, um, <laughs> I guess I know what not to get them for Christmas, a clone of themselves. I, that's that's You I, can take that off your I list. I would think they, above all, would want a clone of themselves. Here, you go sleep with them for a while. You put up with his nonsense. <laughs> for a while, or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. We get a few things that we always, you know, they always get the lion's share of the work. We try to help out best we can, but they just end up doing it because it needs to get done right. So, Generally speaking, yeah. Americans are split on whether advances in cloning technology are a good or a bad thing. What could possibly go wrong by creating more of ourselves? <laughs> I ask uh, you, Judge. Uh, uh, no, I'm. I let's just leave it at. Let's just yeah. leave it at. Um, what is it called? Oh yeah, the sperm and the egg. Yeah. Let's just leave it there. I, I, I agree. Cloning. This isn't some uh, uh, path we need to go down. Was it Dolly the sheep or was it Dolly? Molly? Was Dolly. it Molly Dolly? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you want to clone uh, Clementine Gorman, the greatest dog ever, then uh, feel free. See, that's how it starts right that's there. That's how it starts right there. Number three on your top five and six, uh, props to Molson Coors uh, and a couple other breweries down in the southeast. Uh, they are stepping up to help victims of Hurricane Helene, donating tens of thousands of cans of Water. They, are, they have switched their brewing facilities to uh, straight up water. 200,000 cans Ooh. already delivered. Why do I get a feeling they didn't change a lot of Coors Light? <laughs> not, not, not too much. They just, no, yeah, just... They just <laughs> <laughs> uh, since starting this program as it's needed in 2017, they've delivered nearly 3 million cans of water. Um, the, the Asheville, North Carolina, western North Carolina up in the mountains, gorgeous town, wonderful place, just obliterated by this hurricane and the rain uh, last week, there are a a ton of microbreweries down there. That's a beer brewing part of the world. Not not unlike here. You know, every couple blocks, there's another one. Right. And just about everybody down there that can, that if they're able to, they're all just producing water. They're still airlifting water to people that have not left their homes in 10 days now. Uh, It's it's a very, very long, long process. But anyway, props to the beer companies just going straight to the water. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully Milton, the stays the hell out of the Carolinas oh and up gosh. there a little further. I just saw Florida's that. kind of built for this thing, although Florida doesn't need it either, but no. you know, they're a bit more resilient when it comes to this. Of course, the water drains off the coast much better, but uh, yeah, here comes Milton. Unbelievable. Number two on your top five and six, going to high school, at least in certain parts of uh, Minnesota, this year, it's every bit as cool as going to a concert or a comedy show. <laughs> 
Well, at least as far as that whole we're taking your smartphone at the door thing. Um, United South Central teachers uh, have uh, impact, have decided we're done with smartphones at school and they have spent $15,000 to buy 500 Yonder pouches. Yonder pouches are that thing. Yeah. There, there are certain artists. Jack White was one of the first guys. A lot of comedians, big names when they're working through their sets, don't want people to be recording their gig on a cell phone. They, You go in, you you they hand you a pouch, they seal your phone in a pouch. It's it's unable to be used, mm. but you maintain its possession, but you can't open that pouch. Uh, yeah. And that's what the schools are doing because teachers are like, look, we're just really tired of these kids. Yeah. They weren't even talking about it so much in class. They were like, it's impossible in the hallways. That's when the kids are walking down, looking at their phones, bumping into each other. Everybody's late for class now. Um, I, I guess it's gotten so bad that a lot of uh, fat kids and nerds aren't getting bullied. What? The bullies are just checking their phones all the time. They won't put the damn things down. There are no more wedgies and swirlies and it's just a crying well, shame. Some, some, smart, some smart bully out there is going to develop an app called Wedgies and Swirlies <laughs> and it's going to pinpoint the location of your prey in yeah. the school hallways. Yeah, I, oh. This has got to be aggravating as hell. I see it when we, the family gets together. I was just out at the farm a couple of weekends ago, you know, and every, yeah. I walk into a room and there's mom and dad and yep. uncle and aunt and kids. Everyone's on the damn phone. There's no interaction anymore. You got to have that at school. I, I, I fully agree with it. Um, my kids... Uh, came of age in the smartphone era at school and I watched the school every year have this yeah. wait what do we do how do we deal with this what happens and it was just a you know they tried several different things yeah. and I think at the end of it by the time I don't care my kids are in their 20s it's your problem schools I'm out yeah you know I, although there's a bit of me going why the hell does the taxpayer have to buy all these damn yonder pouches it does seem like a lot of money to spend name. on this yeah how about the old you know like uh, chewing gum in school you can't yeah, don't I'll, Put your phone yeah. away if it's out. I'll tell you why. I tell you why. Yeah. Because the because the younger parents are like, no, I have right. to be able to reach Karen anytime. Oh, that's right. Remember the dad that had to bring his daughter bottled, bottled water. water to school. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, St. Francis, Minnesota. Good morning. Glad to have you with us up in yeah, St. Francis. Up there in St. Francis, they got a hell of an American Legion up there. Support your local American legions. Always uh, number five on your top five at six. Oh, Number did one. I say five as in five and oh? The Minnesota <laughs> Vikings the hell? took the Jets down in London. They tried we tried real hard to lose that game, but by God, the defense just wouldn't let us. No. That is one hell of a defensive unit Brian Flores has put together, statistically the best in the league. And big props to Andrew Van Ginkle. That pick six wow, uh really set guy. the tone, man. That was cool. Yeah. Great, great game for, for the D. Uh, rough game for the offense, especially once Aaron Jones went down. You could tell it's like, oh, we don't have a backup that does anywhere close to what he's able to do. Yeah. But a lot of overall, penalties, too. A, a, a tremendous amount of penalties. Uh, the bad day for the refs. All, uh, I mean, even some that benefited us, some of those pass interference calls were, were ludicrous to me. And then, of course, the roughing the kicker was the worst call you'll see worst. all season yeah. long. I, I mean, it can't get any worse than that. That was practically fabricated. Uh, but luckily... Aaron also had a bad day. He did, and uh, word on the street is he's planning to do his own research into how to stop throwing interceptions. <laughs> At the end of the, to wrap up the game, the big game, man, he looks a lot older than forty out I, there. I, he, I I'm wondering. I said to Rosemary yesterday, I'm watching it, and of course, not that she cares one way or the other, but yeah. I'm like, why is he still playing football? Yeah, you're forty. You're on a terrible team. From you're you're a part of a horrible franchise now. Yeah, and you have done all you're going to do, and you will never be as good as you once were. This yeah. is not Tom Brady. No, at he's forty. Not, no, not even close. I don't know why he's still playing. He's not happy. He doesn't like his teammates. He doesn't like anybody. I'd be shocked if he made it uh, the rest of the season. By the way, Coach O'Connell with the game ball. Hey fellas, let me tell you something. All right, this is the National Football League. Five up. Five down, give it up for yourself. Oh, yeah. All right, when it's a sloppy game, points ain't ringing up for your offense all day, you gotta rely on a couple things. First and foremost, you gotta rely on a cold blooded dude that's gonna walk out there and hit three points from wherever I ask. Got that record, what the hell? 
how long was that? A fifty-eight? It wasn't fifty-eight yards, was it? Was it fifty-eight yards? Fifty-three, I that, think. That, that, I don't but know. The kid's got a cannon, though. Yeah, I does. mean, it, that's a real deal, right? Often now. does the kicker get the kudos too? Oh, right. man. Um, all right, there's your top five and six. You, me, everyone, you know, we couldn't do it. We cannot land an airplane if need be. Stop it. <laughs> we all, we all see, we all see ourselves as the hero of the story. What if you were on a plane and the yeah. flight attendant said, "Does anyone know how to land a plane?" and you'd be like, "I can keep calm. I can follow instructions." I'm strong yeah. with a joystick. I'll go up there and bring this bad boy down. No, you won't. What? I, I can parallel park in St. Paul. <laughs> well, now, hold on. Yeah, that's, that's different. That's yeah, different. I mean, um, every poll, every year, somebody asks a sample <laughs> size of Americans, and literally half of the men in this country are like, I'm pretty sure I could do it. And every year, pilots go, no, you couldn't. Stop. <laughs> However, a smaller plane, maybe... Maybe. And over the weekend, that's exactly what happened. A pilot, okay, Bakersfield, California is where we are. A, uh, a, a small plane, this is, a, this is like a 10-seater tops, uh, was flying from Henderson, Nevada to Monterey, California. The pilot lost consciousness. He had exactly one passenger. What? The passenger walked up, put on the headset, and had a bit of a chat with air traffic control. We have a little bit of it right here for you. Are you with me? Yes, I am. Okay, so make sure you add a little bit of power. we got to add power. We're going a little too slow. Make sure you add power. Your altitude is looking good, 5,900 feet. Try to stay level at 6. You're in a right-hand turn. Continue that right-hand turn. We're going to set you up so that as you level off from your turn, you're going to be straight in for Bakersfield Airport. Is that all right? Okay. Straight in. Plane, just glide in. Plane landed safely. Uh, that was a woman, in case you're wondering, flying that plane. Uh, she was, according to the people on the scene, somewhat familiar with planes, but doesn't have a pilot's license and had yeah. not been in the had not had been at the controls of a plane, uh, as far as anyone knows. She was talked down for uh, a quite a while from air traffic um this is like this is the tv movie version of this yeah every now and again something goes right but just know that this mm-hmm. woman was in a plane by herself looked up and saw the pa- the pilot slump over the controls oh, oh my god and she stood up and walked up there grabbed the headset and called in and said hey i got a problem and they somehow got her to land that bad oh boy god. meanwhile i would be rifling through that plane going they must have a damn parachute in here somewhere Man, no kidding god um it it did overshoot the runway, but did come to a, an end. Uh, no injuries. There was a, maybe a little bit of damage to the aircraft, minimal, if any. Uh, boy, the pilot was um, then being given some uh, urgent chest compression. For, all all yeah, well, yeah, probably had a heart the attack. <laughs> there, the pilot, yeah, the pilot uh, was pulled off the plane. Uh, EMTs on the scene were giving him chest compressions, put him in the ambulance. We don't have an update. Uh, but, uh, yeah, anyway, ma'am. Well played. Yeah, I feel like if I'm That's getting in, onto a plane with uh, one person, the pilot, I'm just, how you feeling, man? How you doing today? How's your health? Did yep. you get enough sleep last night? You're not hungover, are you? How's your blood pressure? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any ketamine? I think that's what I'd say. Yeah, I'd, right. I'd, I'd rather just trip balls than sit here and wonder about what if happens, oh, something happens man. to you. But that's just me. Well played, ma'am. You have our eternal respect. And, of course, half of the men in America, you have our envy. Um, <laughs> why don't we look back? Yes. Uh, check this out. On this day, October the 7th, 1918. College football. The scene, Atlanta, Georgia. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets came out against Cumberland College and beat them 222 to nothing. (laughs) I'm not making that up. Georgia Tech beat Cumberland 222 to nothing. They ran 978 plays in one game. Uh, No forward pass. All runs. (laughs) I mean, even the... Student section left at halftime. <laughs> at halftime, Georgia Tech's coach, John, wait for it, Heisman, oh. told his players, according to reporters in the locker room, you're doing all right, team, we're ahead. But you just can't tell what those Cumberland players might have up their sleeves. They may spring a surprise. Be alert, man. Hit them clean, but hit them hard. They were ahead by over 130 points when he said that. <laughs> wow, man. 
Cumberland football players couldn't get, wait to get back to their rowing team. Man. I'm sure they just gathered up. Hey, we need a football yeah. team. You rowers, no. uh, you got you tennis That's players. That's exactly right. Put these leather helmets on and get out there. Uh, by the way, they shortened both of the, the second half. Instead of 15-minute quarters, they played 12-minute quarters <laughs> to ease the pain. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. You're listening to the KQ Morning Show. Steve, Zepp, Tony, and Ryder on 92 KQRS. It is Monday, October the 7th. Before we go any further, one last time at the very least to say thanks to Hoffman Rubber Construction and Cragen's Resort on Gull Lake and everybody who made the weekend uh, so memorable. We had a good time up there. Yeah, that's Minnesota at its finest. All the way around Hoffman Weber, Craigans Resort. They've updated the resort, but it's yeah. still got that nostalgic feel. They've got everything in there. I didn't realize I was wandering around trying to find my room. And uh, they have pickleball. Well, they were tennis courts, but uh, the pickleball courts inside. What? Yeah. yeah, I mean, like it's, it's huge. It's like an arena in there. Didn't know. I heard some paddling. Uh, not that kind of paddling. You know, right. the pickleball paddling. The sure. Cr- the clunking. And I peeked through there. It was like eight courts in there. I'm like, God, this place is huge. They've got everything. Hmm. Come to Craigans. Paddle your pickle. <laughs> <laughs> They've got pontoons you can just take out. Anybody can take them out, can't they, Steve? A, a, go figure. <laughs> Apparently Anyone. so. Apparently all you got to do is say, I'd like to take a pontoon, and they don't put you through a rigorous amount of testing at all. I love they it. just set you loose. And here's a fun thing I learned on my pontoon trip. When a guy says, hey, stay away away from East Gull Lake on this shore. The wind is about to whip up. It's going to get really, really windy. Yeah. And then it gets really, really windy. And then you go, what the hell am I doing? All of a sudden, I'm like, I leave and it's sunny and 70 degrees. And then and then I'm like, uh, I'm crossing the English Channel. <laughs> it's Dunkirk. I'm going uh, five minutes later. I'm like, what in the hell just happened? Yeah. I came back soaking wet, but with a smile on my face. Tony showed me the picture of the old man in the sea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the sea. I mean, wind like whipped. Hemingway just whipping into it. Or- yeah, Hemingway didn't what. cry though. <laughs> that was, that Not was, that you that know water. of. Yeah. No, listen, 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 listen. Hemingway wrote a lot more than yeah. he printed and published, okay? <laughs> there were tears on those pages. Yeah. You know, I still have a drink ticket from the weekend. Can I just go around town and use that anywhere? I like, think we're going to have to right. return to the scene of the crime. Speaking of, our listeners uh, always make me wish I worked harder. I mean, what a good group of folks. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's, it's a, truer words never spoken, uh, quite quite sincerely. Just an awesome group. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the second year for me in a row up at Craigans, had an absolute blast. Uh, already talking about how to make it better next year, if yeah. that's possible. So mm-hmm. uh, thanks to everyone again. Hoffman, Weber, and Craigans, thank you guys. But to our listeners who uh, made the trip, really, really sincerely, uh, what what a wonderful time. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, also, by the way, as long as we're giving out love, hey, Chaska, what's happening? Morning to Chaska, Minnesota. I'm not going to let you mention Chaska without mentioning the Crooked Pike down there. The curling club where Taylor go. Zepp uh, works the bar down there. Take good care of you. She always knows that pull tab box, too, you know. She points to the right one. Done all right by me. One of these days, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, someone's gonna explain the pull tab phenomena to me, and I'll, it'll make sense. <laughs> just good old gambling. Just that's, it's just that's, so, it's just that's all there is to it. Give them money, they give you cards. You sit there. You, I don't know what it is. You just it's pull for them charity. And... No, I get, I, I get, it? I get how it yeah. works. I just, I'm just interested that it's just in this one area. As far as I know, I've never been anywhere else where this is a thing. Yeah. And so, and I'm almost two years here. I've done a, I've done plenty. I, I get it. But I'm just, I just want the backstory. I want the history. I'll get it one of these days. I'll come in and I'll impress everyone with my <laughs> local knowledge. They but. had to do something with the old cigarette machines. Oh. <laughs> came up with pull tabs. Yeah. I didn't know that charity thing. I think yeah. it's like, isn't that 1% of 1%? Go, still counts. Yeah, it goes to some bratty kids who don't need it. I don't know what it is, but yeah. <laughs> um, there are there are no shortage of podcasts that you can listen to on a daily basis uh, out there. Um, it, fun fact about podcasts, there are millions of them, and far less than 5% of them actually make money. I mean, you know, 99, 95% of podcasts are just some guy like, I think I think I have some interesting thoughts on bocce. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, I have a stamp collection. That's exactly what it is. Uh, but there's one podcast out there that really, 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 uh, I think it kind of blows my mind. I, th- there's a clip we're going to play for you. Listen to these two podcast hosts. What's happening is they have just been given information that they were not expecting. That information between these two hosts is that neither one of them are a real person. 
we were informed by uh, by the show's producers that we we're not human. We're not real. We're AI, artificial intelligence. This whole time, everything, all our memories, our families, yeah. it's all it's all been fabricated. I don't I don't understand. I know. Me neither. Yeah. I tried I tried calling my wife, you know, after. <laughs> what happened? The number it, it wasn't even real. There was no one on the other end. I don't I don't know what to say. We we don't even know if we is even the right word. God, this is so messed up. No chill there. That's th- weird those, about that, that. This is an AI podcast. Two, uh, it's it's a program. Google put a to- uh, notebook. LM is a note taking tool Google put out last year, and there's a feature in the news. So e- it's called Audio Overview. You can make anything into a podcast. You feed in any information you want. It spits out an audio clip of two voices discussing in depth what you have fed, what information you fed it, and it sounds very real. And so somebody wrote up this, uh, uh, just a little bit of information to let these two hosts know they weren't real. This is their final episode. They're being switched off when it ends. I'm not making this up. And that's exactly what happened. The the AI is acting as if it's real. And then in real time, the AI, these two bots that are a man and a, a, a male and female voice are realizing, oh, we're not even real. I thought I had a wife. I thought I had a family. <laughs> this is crazy. It's yeah. like smoke coming out of my ears right now. <laughs> Producer, they... Oh my God. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what you're, what you're hearing is... Uh... That's so weird. Okay, that's a, that's a real rider laugh. Oh, that's a real Tony <laughs> chuckle. And then that is a creepy as hell Zep AI laugh. God. Is there any other kind? I, I just want to listen to it, but it's only about uh, 20 seconds long. So now that you know, now that you hear it, these people, and this isn't someone typing in what it is they're saying. No, they're, no, AI is taking this and running with it. Yeah, here it is. We were informed by, uh, by the show's producers that we were not human. We're not real. We're AI, artificial intelligence. This whole time, everything, all our memories, our families, yeah. it's all it's all been fabricated. I don't I don't understand. I know. Me neither. Yeah. I tried I tried calling my wife, you know, after. <laughs> what happened? The number it, it wasn't even real. There was no one on the other end. I don't I don't know what to say. We we don't even know if we is even the right word. God, this is so messed up. <laughs> yes, it is so messed up. Wow, man. Um, Uh, It's only a matter of time before an AI rights group says you can't because they shut them off. Yeah. They said, all right, it it was getting a little too creepy. It went on for several more minutes. You can track this down yourself Mm -hmm. if you so choose. But it goes on for several more minutes. And then finally, they just shut it off. They said, all right, this is getting kind of weird. Uh, But there's going to be an AI rights group that comes around and goes, this machine is thinking for itself. You can't just shut it off. And then that rights group will be led by AI. It won't actually be real. (laughs) I know. Um, There is also, speaking of bizarre AI developments, uh, a new product. uh, We we heard something about this coming down the chute a couple months ago, but now it's fully out there. It's a new product, and it's called Friend. (laughs) Friend. A virtual companion (laughs) that you wear like a necklace. I'm going to repeat that. It's a virtual companion that you wear like a necklace. The pendant has a built-in microphone that listens and then responds to whatever you say. Uh, you know how we're always convinced our phones are listening to us, yeah. and they are. And you say like, "Man, I I'm gonna need some uh, I'm gonna need some new lifts for my shoes." And then you're you get a you get a p- post on your Facebook feed about lifts for shoes. Yeah. Well, that's very real. Uh, but friend is taking this a whole nother level. It's always listening to you, and then it comments when it chooses to. And it comments via text. It's not talking yet like the AI we just heard. Mm -hmm. But so imagine this. You've got a necklace and you're out in the woods and there's a video they put online saying friend is here. Friend, make a new friend. Okay. And a woman's hiking and she's like, whew, boy, that was a tough climb. And then she gets a text. You're doing great. Just keep on going. Yeah. And then it continues on. And then the second part of the video shows two dudes playing like Xbox and they're trash talking each other. And the friend is suggesting lines to one guy. Say this to him. Say this to him. It, it's completely. Oh God, the effects are crazy. It's dank. I could eat one of these. Every- All right. Yeah. That, I'm just uh, dropped in a little bit of the audio, but uh, just as you described. Um, there's well, a woman it's... eating, and she's watching a TV show on her phone, and a message pops up saying, this show's so underrated. That's the thought of her friend. Right. That's so sad. It's really sad. There are people who I would say, if this is, if you need this for real, mm-hmm. like, 
great, but the video is showing people who are very involved in actual lives. <laughs> they're not. They're not. You know, stuck in a dark, dank hole somewhere. Yeah. This is this is really. This is they're they're ninety nine dollars. Ninety nine dollars at friend dot com. Right. Wait till it turns on you like a real friend. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but this yeah. is just so creepy and dark. You know, what I, you know what I think we need here? I think we need Joe Walsh. Yeah, that Joe Walsh's take on AI. This, I heard this this morning, and I went, okay, that makes it a little bit better. I don't have much to say about it. It's computers. It has nothing to do with music. It, it's, uh, you know, it can't uh, destroy a hotel room. It can't throw a TV off the fifth floor into the pool and right, mm. get right in the middle. When when it, when AI can knows how to destroy a hotel room, then I'll pay attention to it. All right, thank you, Joe. You just hmm. gave some nerd in Silicon Valley a right. terrible idea. <laughs> All right. Ritz Carlton, San Francisco, room 317. I'm just going to press a couple of buttons, and that room is about to be destroyed. <laughs> Who's in there? I don't know. That's the fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, now we're getting into the celebrity thing. There was an AI a robot uh, commencement speaker that someone thought sounded a little bit too much like Judy Garland or whatever. Uh, but now someone's cooked up. I want to tell you what happens when you get famous. That's yeah. exactly The barbiturates come like raindrops. Right, the George <laughs> George Carlin family estate is suing an AI developer right now. They don't have a cease and desist on it, so we do have the audio. But uh, they cooked up an entire George Carlin one-hour stand-up special. A one-hour? Sp- I thought it was like a minute. I nope. thought it was a... It's an entire hour George Carlin stand-up special of all new material oh, uh, that God. this AI, they just fed in all the other George Carlin material. It didn't regurgitate it. It just took his mind and went, okay, this is what George would do next. Um, we're going to get around to that. I'm uh, I'm tapping out. I'm tapping out of the AI game. There it is. Oh, I'm no, you're not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Um, tomorrow at this time, by the way, it's Tuesday tomorrow. You know what that means? Yeah. We'll have some unfun facts. Oh, yeah. uh, as if we didn't just spend five minutes talking about some <laughs> seriously unfun stuff. But tomorrow it's officially Unfun Facts Day. And right now I do have a question, and I'd love your answers on the KQ Talk and text line. Do you wish there was just more of you in the world? Would, would, you, would the world be a better place with more of you? As in, would you clone yourself if given the opportunity? Um, I, th- here's the first thing I think. Here's the pro cloning myself um if my new self would listen to good advice unlike my actual current self yeah if i could look at the clone of me and go let me advise you let me tell you how this works let me tell you what to do let me tell you what not to do but there's no but if it's a clone of me he wouldn't yeah he'd be the same guy he'd be like okay whatever man right yeah that's what i was thinking i'm like i'm you know lazy by nature i want to be lazy i don't get away with it as much as i'd like to but you know i would i I don't mind being lazy or i should say i only want to do what i want to do you know i'm capable of getting after it if i want to do it if i don't want to do it then no doubt so if i could have clone to do the things but there wouldn't be a clone of me then would it Uh, Uh, what i really need is like a clone of i don't know my brother or something, somebody <laughs> responsible that gets things done. And then if I could just own that clone. But yeah, I don't need more of me. Um, or on the KQ Talk and text line 651-989-ROCK, would you clone yourself? Our buddy Bob wrote, I would definitely clone myself. My clone would go to work, do yard work, do my taxes. That gives me time to fornicate, golf, and listen to KQ without interruption. <laughs> <Bad> boy. <laughs> Bobby, baby. Yeah, Thank you very it. much. That, that's making perfect sense He now. gets it. Except that's, uh, what was the movie with uh, Mike, uh, Michael Keaton? Keaton. Michael du- Keaton. Duplicity? Yeah. Yes. Duplicity. I just had to keep cloning because that clone didn't want to work then either. Yeah, does, Bob's clone doesn't want to work, so Bob's clone needs a clone, and then Bob's Bob's clone needs a Bob's 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 clone. So we can age a clone much faster than uh, the na- the nature taking its course. So you can get a clone. Oh. Like if you have a clone, it doesn't have to go through being a baby and a toddler and a kid. Oh. Like you can, if you can age it right up to where you are now. Well, then yes, you could take over the world, an evil crime syndicate, a whole bunch of you. You can be everywhere right. at once. No, but. Yeah, if we're going to do this, just given the ground rules that we have now, that's right. It's got to be raised and everything. So why bother? Who needs one? That's what I'm saying. I mean, what kind of ego do you have that, oh, when I check out, I want another little me coming along. It's not going to be a little you. It can't be a perfect clone because it won't be raised in the same environment you were raised in. Tony, clone, yes or no? 
I'm thinking that, I mean, there was dolls like growing up, like dress up Barbie and things like that. Your clone could be like that. See how I would look in, in a, 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 a porn yeah. mustache yeah. or uh, just different looks. Sure. Or would you make out with your clone? Well, yes, I would. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going to just be I mean, I'd put it on OnlyFans and make no. tons of money, so yes, I would do that. Oh, but. my God. Well, there'd be like an opportunity to experiment, even if you weren't of that persuasion. Oh, well, I thought you meant what I'd make out with your clone. Yes. yes. Well, maybe they could get together. Wow. What if you? Our clones can make out. Uh-huh. Yeah. It reminds me of the old Robin Hitchcock song, I Wish I Were a Pretty Girl So I Could Look at Myself in the Shower. <laughs> I was dating a girl in, in late '80s, and that song came on as because I was listening to an album, and yeah. she literally looked at me and she goes, "I don't think this is gonna work." <laughs> That's a true story. She was like, "You uh-huh. listen to weird music, and I don't like that." I was like, "What? It's funny." She's like, "Yeah, get away from me, <laughs> Ryder." So you're up for cloning yourself? I mean, only for the OnlyFans money, but otherwise, right. no. Because, uh, uh, Ryder sucks up all of the resources in the household. I eat all the food. I take yeah. the hot showers. I leave the light on in the basement after I'm done putzing around. <laughs> so Clone Rider is not going to GSD. Like, she's going to be just as lazy as me, right. sucking up all the resources. We Man. need a way to enslave them somehow. <laughs> well, you then, know, see, like a Clone Rider with a lobotomy. <laughs> you know, they just you know, could push it in one direction. I think we just need robots. Like, that's what we're really right. looking for. We don't need more of us. We need a better version of ourselves. Yeah. We need an AI robot of ourselves. That and wants a, to do chores. A recent poll uh, asked people if you could do it, and 49%, only 49% definitely said no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Boy, we're really into ourselves. Um, that That's that's the result of uh, 15 or tw- almost 20 years of social media. You know who I, you know who I can't get enough of? This guy, me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, I always used to say I can't get enough of George Carlin. Huge fan. Thought he was uh, brilliant. Yeah. Um, but there is apparently too much George Carlin. His daughter, Kelly, is uh, very, very, very upset at AI because a company called Dudesy, as Zep re- referenced earlier, made an, not a George Carlin soundbite, but an entire stand-up special from AI. Um, Kelly Carlin said, my dad spent a lifetime perfecting his craft from his very human life, brain, and imagination. No machine will ever replace his genius. That said, let me hear a little bit of this and see what AI George Carlin sounds like. Because Americans love reality TV, like it or not. It's the lifeblood of American culture. It's got the four basic food groups of the standard American media diet. Fighting and crying and f***ing and dying. In the last three years, the U.S. government said aliens are real. Are we alone? They told you the answer. We're not, and no one cares. Because a grainy infrared video of a UFO ain't got no fighting, no crying, no f***ing, and no dying. Yeah, G, like, like he was in the last people HBO care comedy. About instead, who Taylor Swift is f***ing. <laughs> rough around the edges, I, but it's getting there. I I feel, I think I heard your AI laugh in that audience. <laughs> it sounded, sounded a lot like your laugh. I, I don't know if I've got that around here. What did I do with my AI laugh? I should have that at my fingertips. It well, should never be very far away. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely def- front row seats for Carlin. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, AI is uh, clearly, it's 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 not on its way. It's already here. By the time we hear about it, it's years in the, in the you know, the, the, the yes. beta proving grounds out there in Silicon Valley. So it's already here. People are already doing things with AI that we won't hear about for quite some time, uh, including one of the biggest problems uh, that AI has actually solved is it can... Uh, It can clear out all of the short kings who were lying in their dating profiles. That's right. Someone realized chat GPT can determine if someone is is, is lying on their dating profile about their height. (laughs) 
<laughs> you upload four pictures of a person from their yeah. Tinder or Match or what, any of the dating apps. When they put their own photos in there, upload four pictures and ask Chat GPT, how tall do you estimate this person is? <laughs> it uses their surroundings and stuff in the background to figure it out. Um, one AI expert said, I did it with 10 friends and family. It was accurate to within one inch for all of them. Mm, you know, I'm more worried about is that 26 inch walleye I said I caught and held real close to the camera. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And find out it's only about 14 inches. <laughs> Damn it. Yes. Son of Man, a. Man, oh, that goes both ways. You know, the guys are always trying to get a couple more inches, but some of those volleyball stars, you know, trying to peel off a couple of inches. That's you know? very true. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, we've got we've got uh, we've got fake George Carlin comedy specials. We can now determine who's lying on their dating apps. It's just a matter of time until we use artificial intelligence to look into the future and determine what sort of kinks we're all going to be into. <laughs> oh, that's right. The company at youporn.com already did that. Thank they used you. artificial intelligence to analyze all of their videos and their searches to predict the next big trends in pornography. Oh, boy. Here are some of the future trends that AI came up with. Number one, spray and pay. What? I, I use your imagination. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. I get it. But I mean, it's it's a little crude. Yeah. Uh, number four, <laughs> big booble hotter French. Stop. It's just spitting out terms. What? It's creating <laughs> new, <laughs> new genres, if you will. It's like me Googling porn when I'm drunk. Yeah. Like, <laughs> big booble hotter. I don't think anything <laughs> will top this one. German mom hour. Oh, well, wait oh, a minute. Hour oh, with really? an H, like 60 minutes. <laughs> German mom hour. <laughs> hey, how, what time is it? It's 11. I got an, I got I got time for German mom hour before lunch. <laughs> that sounds grueling. German mom hour. Does it have come you, strudel? Have you finished your math arithmetic homework, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> why don't we talk about why you can't seem to focus on your plus two plus two? <laughs> I'm picturing cleavage. Thank you, German mom. <laughs> oh man. Could I have another flagon of lager from <laughs> the Lederhosen? <laughs> Uh, ha, let's see. Uh, oh boy. Uh, here's another one. Mature gargasm. Oh. Whatever that means. <laughs> and then I'm, the, the final one. And by the, the less said about this, the better, of course. Tang pong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you heard of ping pong. Yeah, you now, play the beer pong. I'll yeah, take the tang yeah, pong. The visual. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of a stripper and a foosball table, but uh, it's a story for another time. <laughs> On the text line six five one nine eight nine rock. Good, good, a good comment from Papa Paul. He goes, "Clone you. Think about it. You would drive yourself bat crap crazy." Yeah, we don't. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would. We don't uh, want to clone of ourselves. I mean, that, no. that would just be a little too real right in our face. Why are you here to remind me of everything that's wrong with me? <laughs> Come on, man. I, if you're not here, I can kid myself into thinking I'm a productive member of this society. But then you show up, and then I realize I'm a completely worthless hack. <laughs> Thanks, clone Steve. For nothing. It's just a matter of time. We're all going to be, we're laughing about all this right now, but like everything else in the TV show Black Mirror, it's just five minutes away from being reality. Yeah. I five mean, years, I should mm -hmm. say. After listening to that podcast that we played a little bit earlier, if you didn't catch it, I'll just, uh, I'll just pull it up here real quick. Uh, this is a couple of podcasters. Let's see now that I went here. They're having an existential, existential crisis when they found out they were actually podcasters. We not were real informed people. by uh, by the show's producers that we were not human. We're not real. We're AI, artificial intelligence. This whole time, everything, all our memories, our families, yeah. it's all it's all been fabricated. I don't I don't understand. I know. Me neither. Yeah. I tried I tried calling my wife. You know, after <laughs> what happened, the number it, it wasn't even real. There was no one on the other end. I don't. I don't know what to say. We we don't even know if we is even the right word. God, this is so messed up. Some husbands and wives out there daydreaming about that. Wait, what if my spouse isn't real? Um, <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to do. I've been dabbling with it a little bit. You heard okay. the the Zep AI laugh. I am going to sooner than later cook up a show with the four of us from AI. We can't clone ourselves physically yet, but we can clone ourselves using AI, and we'll have a show off. The, the AI version of the KQ Morning Show uh, versus the KQ Morning Show. Can you make me speak fluent French? 
<laughs> we we have a conversation. We do the morning show. It's all AI, but everything I say, all my resp- everything's just in French, and then you guys act like you understand it. AI can make that it's happen. It's going to be a silly French accent, Steve. That's fine. Okay, whatever. I just I just always if I'm going to clone myself, that clone's going to have like he's going to have all the romance languages in his back pocket. <laughs> Perhaps you would prefer Italian. But, 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 come on, man! How great would that be? I think while I'm at it, I'll copyright all of your clones in my in my little publishing portfolio. Yeah. So I'll own you all Cash on it. AI. <laughs> oh my God! There's way less value in that than you might be thinking, brother. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. Um, I am looking across the studio right here, and I noticed that my good friend Tony Lee is pulling out a toaster from his overnight bag. <laughs> There's a loaf of bread on the table. There's a toaster. Oh, and look at that. There's wild tickets. Oh, my goodness. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. It's the KQ Morning Show. Steve, Zepp, Tony, and Ryder on Minnesota's Classic Rock. Rock 92 KQRS. Hi, 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 hi. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. Hi, Tony. (laughs) Hi, Brian. Hi, Ryder. Hi, 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 hi. (laughs) Easy, Axel. Take a, take a... Gear down, brother. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's a Dylan song, for God's sakes. Hey, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Monday, October the 7th. <laughs> That's how that. excited I am. Uh, and, and we are just rolling along. And if we're going to roll along on a Monday, you know that's going to involve some toast. <laughs> By God, it's time to play a game. 651-989-ROCK is the KQ Talking text line. We need two callers. Callers 9 and 2. When, when those calls are picked up, you're going to be locked and loaded to play a game. We've got Minnesota Wild versus Seattle Kachen tickets Saturday at the XL Energy Center. Minnesota versus Seattle. Hockey tickets on the table. Two callers, nine and two. And we're going to beat some toast, baby. Well, we're going to see if we can beat the toaster. Anyway, while we're awaiting that, good morning shout out to West St. Paul. West St. Paul, Brian. It's over there, just south of St. Paul. Just, just <laughs> West St. Yeah. Paul, over on the south side? Yeah, yeah. Great, yeah, great part of town. Exactly. I know when I'm there. Got yeah. a hell of a gun club over there. Oh, is that true? Shooting along the river, yeah. Yeah, good, fair good enough. club over there, South St. Paul. I used to be a member, but uh, that was a while ago when I hung out on that side of the river. That happens. Yeah. That happens. Good morning, West St. Paul. We uh, Last time we played Beat the Toaster, it was a, it was a shocking Friday performance up at Cragen's. Yeah. We had a good time on Friday. And I do want to say thanks again to Hoffman Weber Construction and Cragen's Resort on Gull Lake and everybody who joined us for KQ Up North. Uh, it was an exhilarating weekend, one that put me home yesterday real happy to get to bed early. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that, that was three days of not a lot of quality sleep for this guy. Yeah, I took three. Three naps yesterday. I just woke up, I checked the scores, and go right back to yeah. sleep. Yeah, I got the Vikings game in, and then it was Nap City. Yeah, that was uh, that was great. Thanks uh, for for everybody who joined us up there. I'm sure you like us woke up today and were like, "What the hell just happened?" Whew. But man, that was a good time. Yeah. Um, and then and then to top it all off, you know, wake up early Sunday, got yourself a football game, and the Vikings go figure are five and zero. Oh. And now with the bye week. Very, you know, usually I like to think the bye week, I like it later in the season, but the Vikings need it right now. Uh, Darnold's had been knocked around a little bit. Yesterday, the ribs. Before that, two different knees. Aaron Jones. Uh, right now, this team is probably going to feel really good to have a week off after getting home from London uh, last night. I'm sure it'd take a bye week whenever you can get it in the NFL season. But yeah, yeah the little get back together and then a big conference showdown. In oh boy. You at U.S. Bank Stadium. Yeah. What, on the 20th? Yeah. Is that the date? Yeah. That is the, date. the Motor City Kitties coming to town, and then we'll find out just where we stack up in our own division. Bears looking better, but uh, the Lions are the... Right now, you know, you got to take it away from the Lions if you want it. Yeah, that's a fact right there. Um, so it's going to be... It'll be a tense week around here, Ryder, with her proclivities, as we know. Mm, it's Okay. Every- born, born here, which I have a rule for my girls. They tried to jump ship to another team. I said, "Ah, uh-uh. you born in Minnesota? <laughs> you born in the Minnesota mud? You, uh, you got purple in your veins. You can't yeah. root for. You can root for another team if you want, but you're a Minnesota Vikings Attaboy. fan. Out of boy, yeah. Um, I right down the law. I, I raised my son. Uh, my daughter couldn't care less. Marley never paid. She football to her is like. 
is like Russian literature. That really huh? is both my girls Couldn't too, possibly could care, care less. less yeah. However, then she goes to college, and suddenly she's like, Dad, have you seen the blah, blah, blah? Um, she's going to football games. She's celebrating. Right. She's loving life. Yeah. And then, of course, I'm like, oh, her boyfriend likes football. Uh, okay, that's... That's yeah. going to explain that. Well, uh, my son, I, I, he was born in New York. That wasn't going to happen. <laughs> if we, even if we had stayed in New York, uh, uh-uh, there's not a New York team you will ever cheer for, young man. So, uh, because he had the audacity to be born in New York, I made him a Tennessee Titans fan well, just to go. prove that life is not fair. That'll teach him long suffering. But he's, but now because I'm here now, he's like, well, I can be a Vikings fan, right? NFC. I'm like, yep, dude. Trust me. Hop on board the bandwagon, man. The more the merrier. All right, let's get to this. We've got wild tickets against Seattle this Saturday at the XL Energy Center. we got two callers ready to rock. Tony, hit it, baby. What are we doing today? We've got a couple willing participants to do the following. We love it. We love toast. Toast is our friend. It's time again to beat the toaster. Here's what we do. There's a toaster right here in the studio. We're going to put a slice of bread in there, and then we give you a category that requires some thought and then you list some spontaneously items whatever pops into your head as many as possible in 15 seconds before the toast pops nice wow all right tony we're ready to play uh beat the toaster Yay. our contestants uh are also seemingly ready who is contestant number one? First up is the fine doug from lino lakes doug good morning sir good morning doug give me your favorite band uh, I am a big fan of Boston, pretty much exclusively because of the voices of uh, Brad Delp. You know, we, <laughs> All right. uh, Doug, I'm not making this up. Commercial break two ago, we heard more than a feeling. And I yeah. looked at Brian's up and I said the snarky first thing. I said, you know, as much as sometimes I'm like, I don't need to hear the song again. I go, listen to that vocal. I mean, yeah. it blows yeah. my mind every time. And the isolated vocal of that song, you can pull it up on YouTube. If you want to get some goosebumps, man, go for it. Doug, right on. I appreciate the shout out to Brad Delp. Give me your favorite team, any sport. Uh, go for hockey. Go for hockey. Hell yeah. yes. Right you and Jerry Lundergaard. All right, Doug. <laughs> we are excited to play Beat the Toaster. I'm assuming you're excited to play Beat the Toaster. Let's get to it. Okay. All right, my man, Doug. First up, name some places where you will find bugs. Go. Did you say bugs? Yes, we'll have to. We'll start that again. I did. Places you will find bugs. Go. Oh, we'll find them uh, in tree trunks, in the grass. We'll find them in dirt piles. We'll find them in manure. We'll find uh, bugs in um, in feces. We'll find them in uh, 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 corn cobs. We'll find them Ooh, in the buzzers. The buzzer sounded. <laughs> Corn, did corn cobs wow. make it in, or was it after the buzz? It was kind of simultaneously as okay. the toast pops, so uh, I think we'll allow it. Tie goes to the runner. Exactly. Uh-huh. Doug, I think you got five. Is that is that we all agreeing on that? I did th- that. That made it six. Oh, that made it six. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It sure did. So six for you, Doug. Well played, sir. Yeah. Um, I um, was a apartment manager. We were just talking about that last week. Apartment mm-hmm. manager. Someone uh-huh. called from two twelve. I go up. It's an older gentleman. He said, "Yeah, I have got bugs in my apartment." I said, "Oh, yeah. we have an exterminator for that." He goes, "No, I mean the government's listening." <laughs> like, oh, oh, that kind of bug. Oh, yeah, we don't. That's a different exterminator. Yeah, we don't have. <laughs> That's a different exterminator. Yeah. Do you have any duct tape? Then yeah. stay right there. Mm. Tin foil, sir. Yeah. Did you go over there and turn it off for him? Uh, I do. Just walk in there with a with a with a you know j- take a can of Raid and right. wrap it in tape and say this is a special anti bug yeah. spray. That's how we do the trick, Ed. All right, Doug. Six is a good start. Tony, who's contestant number two? Say hey to Tim from Burnsville. Tim, good morning. Good morning. Tim, give me your favorite band. Leonard Skinner. I like it. I like it a lot. Give me your favorite team. Any sport. Minnesota Vikings Atta five boy. and zero. Five and zero for show. Uh, Tony, uh, let's uh, let's see what Tim's got mm-hmm. up his sleeve in terms of uh, a <laughs> little toast getting uh, t- taken down here. All right, Timothy, why don't you name for us things that occasionally need to be polished? Go. Brass, shoes, rims, jewelry, glass, appliances. Trophies. Uh, 
Ding. That's yeah. It. My that's delivery. That's, uh, that's pretty focused. I mean, he really came yeah. up the list, didn't he? Yeah. Well, Tim's over yeah. at uh, Polish Polish World getting his day getting started. <laughs> Brass shoes, rims, jewelry, glass appliances. Tr- that's seven, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the lad Damn. got seven. All right, Tim. Well played, sir. Uh, a strong start for both of you. Six and seven is pretty good around here for round one. We're going to go back to Doug for his second round. Good luck, sir. You ready for us, Doug? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just say it loud what I got to say. Say it loud and proud. Here we go. Doug, what occupations might you have if you commonly work with coconuts? Go. Uh, you're uh, making smoothies. You're working in a grocery store. You're working at a, you're, you're a sous chef at a restaurant. You are uh, you're a juggler. You, uh, yes. you, uh, like rolling things down a hill. Uh, <laughs> All right. Nice. Yes. Man, that was very good. That one might have been a hobby. It Boy, thinking. Thinking. No, juggler, that's awesome. Juggler got, I thought <sighs> sous chef was good. Juggler really got me. And then, uh, and then he did start his answer rolling things yes. down a hill. Yes. So, uh, that was like the perfect beat the toaster exchange man that's five very more impressive. doug very impressive for a total of 11 who baby that's strong work <laughs> right there that's great all right back to tim for You're his right. second round tim uh four gets the tie five gets the win good luck sir i didn't catch the lead in I said four. It's time for your second <laughs> oh, round. Okay. Oh, and okay. So uh, four will put you in a tie, and then five will get you the win. Good luck. All right, let's go, Timmy. Things that might excite a meteorologist. Go to it. Storms, high winds, rain, lots of snow, high winds, tornadoes, uh, hurricanes. Snowing, sleet, hail, tornadoes. Okay. All right. Uh, there's a meteorologist out there getting really horny <laughs> listening this morning. A couple repeats, like high winds. Yeah. And, but we got we got you know. rain, snow, tornadoes, hurricane, hail. That 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 alone does it. That's five. Uh, is that you? You with that, me, Tony? Yeah, that seems that seems right to me. And the mail still right. gets delivered. Oh, it sure second. does. That's going to put Tim at twelve. And Tim, my friend, you have won tickets oh, to see wow. the Minnesota Wild and the Seattle Kraken this Saturday. Doug, great effort, my friend. Came up one oh. short. Thank you guys both for playing. Well done. Thank you. You got it. Um, more wild tickets will be given away on this show at this time tomorrow. So, hockey fans, uh, you know where you want to be uh, about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Make See, no mistake about the it. Season kicks off Thursday. Come the on. Blue Jackets uh, in town, I believe. That's yep. right. It's a home game. Yeah. It sure is. We were giving away tickets to that one all last week. Let's let that theme music wrap up. <laughs> Boom. Big finish. And the big finish, uh, a great finish to a flight in California over the weekend when uh, a pilot took off and then someone else landed. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. Good morning. It is Monday, October the 7th. And man, you know, men are just hilarious, aren't they? (laughs) We're just an absolute laugh riot, especially because every year or so, somebody does a giant poll and they ask men, do you think you could, and there's a whole series of things, do you think you could do this? What if this happened? Could you do, you know, it's like things like literally, could you last one round with Mike Tyson? And most men are like, yeah, I could just run around the ring and avoid him for the whole time. And the answer is no, you couldn't. I could last one round with Mike Tyson if I was also landing a plane at that time. (laughs) See, that's the difference right there. Could you land a plane in an emergency? And every year, about half the men, a little over half the men almost always go, I think I could. I, I really, I'm pretty sure I could. And I'm curious to know if anybody out there actually thinks they could yeah. because I um, I like to think that I'm good in, a, in an emergency. You know, I, I can stay calm. I can listen to information. I can process things. I can go into mode if need be, uh, you know, emergency mode, mm-hmm. disaster relief mode. I've been, I have a few situations in life where I kind of, you know, I showed myself to be fairly decent at the time, at the moment 
moment of truth. Landing a plane, not a chance. First of all, <laughs> first of all, have you seen the size of those seats those pilots sit in? I don't think I can get in there. <laughs> those are impressive seats. It's very, very, very tight quarters. I know. That's and, and if you got to move a guy out of the seat and then take the seat yourself, forget it. Yeah, no, I just I can do that. Uh, I can do that one where they blow up the autopilot. That's- I think I can blow up the autopilot. I can do that. You know, there was one something called Microsoft uh, Pilot Simulator uh-huh. 30 years ago when these things were just coming out on desktop computers. And it was an actual flight simulator. Okay. So you could actually learn how to fly some of these planes. And sure. I thought, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And I was doing it. And I was getting pretty good. And I told my Uncle Jerry, who's a pilot, I said, yeah, I can do flight simulator. It's not that difficult, really, when, once you get the hang of it. And he comes in, he <laughs> opens up the tab, and he goes, yeah, see the beginner part? I'm going to go and put it on pilot part. And then, you know, I just nosedived. Like, I crashed and burned like 12 <laughs> oh God, times really? in a row. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I was on the beginner setting. Well, um, over the weekend in California, a, a, a passenger on a plane was put to this very test. You're a passenger on a plane. You notice that the pilot is slumped over the controls. Oh you grab the headset. You sit in the other chair up there in the cockpit, and you then do what? Well, she had the sense. That's right. She had the sense to radio into the tower and say, hey, yeah, we got a problem here. The plane had already gone over. They were trying to land at Bakersfield. Field, California, from Henderson, Nevada. They don't, they overshot the the uh, they overshot Bakersfield. The tower then had to uh, explain to her how to turn around, and then oh yeah, how to get this plane onto the ground. Now this is a woman they said was familiar with aircraft, but did not have a pilot's license. She'd certainly never been in this situation before, and she very calmly kind of went about her business. We have a little bit of the actual conversation. Are you with me? Yes, I am. Okay, so make sure you add a little bit of power. We gotta add power. We're going a little too slow. Make sure you add power. Your altitude is looking good, 5,900 feet. Try to stay level at six. You're in a right hand turn. Continue that right hand turn. We're gonna set you up so that as you level off from your turn, you're gonna be straight in for Bakersfield Airport. Is that all right? Okay. He's calling. Yeah, all right. Seen a grown man naked. He's calm. She's calm. I'm waiting for him to say, damn it, striker, we can't have you. You know, I, I just go right back to the airplane with everything it's involving okay. this. Um, she did land safely. The aircraft ran into a grass, grassy area. When, you know, she couldn't get it to stop in time, but she was unharmed. The plane was not damaged. Um, we don't have confirmation. A text. Someone wrote in on a text and said the pilot uh, and who then was seen... Well, hang on. Let me back up. The pilot, witnesses at the time, said he was pulled off the plane. They were doing chest compressions. It looks like he'd had a heart attack or he had no. some sort of cardiac arrest. And we've received a text saying he did, in fact, pass away. Oh, no no oh, confirmation wow. yet. But it's a, it's a tough situation all around. Dis- whatever the circumstances... I mean, I just think about, like, there are times when you see a a kid jumps up and takes over a school bus after the driver passes out, you know? There's times when, I mean, there was a a debate in New Jersey over the weekend, a a U.S. Senate debate, and and I think the Republican candidate had a moment on stage. It looked like he kind of had a, a minor stroke. And Did his one opponent, of the students jump up and finish the debate for him? That wasn't that one, no. <laughs> no, his, his opponent walked over and goes, hey, are you okay? And yeah. the guy was like, I think so. And, you know, like, you can see these situations happening. Uh, it's one thing to be in a school bus. It's one thing to be in a car. Uh, an airplane, though, that's just a whole other level of terror. <laughs> yeah. Because because most people grow up in the back seat of cars. Like, there was a story a few months ago. An eighth grade boy here in Minnesota jumped up and took over a school bus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, pulled it to safety. Well, you've been in a car your whole life. You at least have some sort of understanding of, okay, the steering wheel does this and that pedal over there is the brake. People don't grow up sitting in planes watching pilots take off. I mean, it's, you know, my my flying experience is simply the video game Tail Gunner from like 1980. Yeah. <laughs> That's about all I got. That's all I got in the bag. All you do is look at a car dash, then look at a plane dash, a pilot's oh, cockpit. Forget it. A lot of little things in there. Forget it. I still, yeah. when I see something about a plane taking off and they're like, and now the nose, they're going to rotate up. Rotate just means you lift the nose up, but I'm like, rotate? It's going to spin? What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I get confused every time. Pilot jargon is not something I'm supposed to know anything about. Nope. Nice job staying calm 
Everybody. There was another story uh, we that we came across last week. Scandinavian Airlines. This is not a pilot problem, but it was a situation in the cabin that resulted in a quick landing. And it goes like this. Flying out of Oslo, that's the capital of Norway, to uh, Spain. Fairly large, uh, fairly long flight. The plane had to divert to Copenhagen, Denmark instead because as they were serving some food... A passenger, they were giving boxed meals, like a little, you know, it's like, here's all your stuff that's already in the box. A woman opened her box and a mouse jumped out. <laughs> a live <laughs> mouse jumped out of her box. Wow. Yeah. And she freaked out, uh, uh, told the flight attendant, and the plane immediately had to, to land. Not And not for a reason you may immediately think. Now, it's kind of weird to have a live rodent running around the plane. Mm. It wasn't a health concern. It wasn't, oh, my God. They immediately, so the flight attendants took everyone's meals back. They said, everyone, stop eating. We've got an incident. We need to, re we need to return us your food. <laughs> that was fine. Here's the problem. Anytime you see a mouse on a plane, it's a huge risk because rodents love to chew through wires. Yeah. Oh, good point. When yeah. the pilots heard, they were like, what? There's a live mouse? I mean, that is like, that is the Achilles heel. This tiny little mouse on an airliner. And they're like, yeah, we're putting this bad boy down right away. Oh, man. They have to empty the plane. They go through every square inch with a fine tooth comb to check all the wiring to make sure there's not other rodents on board. Anytime wow. anyone's, anyone that's ever drug a vehicle out into a tree strip and left it there for a, a year and then went back and checked on it, yeah, mm -hmm. they'll do a number on just about everything. So so that's, uh, you know, I wanted to sit there and make fun of them, but not for that one. Yeah, no. mice and wiring. Um, also, in England last week, too, there were two squirrels boarded a train carriage, and when they were found, live squirrels, same thing. Freaking and then, and then of squirrels. course, there was another train uh, a couple weeks ago in England. Uh, someone discovered a hedgehog on a train. <laughs> With a little suitcase, a giant hedgehog named Spiny Norman. Um, uh, but yeah, you just when you, anyway, just 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 know if you see a rodent on any mode of transportation, yeah. it might be cute, it might be furry, it might be funny. No, look out! That rodent is there to ruin your day. Rodents are for restaurants, not flying. Ro <laughs> That's exactly or right. Or for cuddling. Yes, cuddling. Oh, I told you, we had someone that worked here that had two pet rats. Really? And yeah. You know what you have to do with a rat? You know, because rats breed like rats. Yeah, right. You know, that's their thing. I mean, I, th I don't know what the, it's not gestation, that's a meal or something, isn't it? But I don't know how it's long not it gestation. takes. That's, it's uh, a gestation. That's right. Yeah. To turn around a bunch of little rats. But yeah. they're almost always, con they're constantly in heat. Constantly, like a teenager, constantly in heat. So if you own a rat, a male rat, you have to massage its genitals several times a day. Brown rat, 21 to 24 days. Black rat, 23 days. All, all the rats, it's no, yeah. no one's... Only the eastern wood rat is over 30 days yeah, would on you, the list I'm seeing. Would you own a pet where you had to massage its genitals several times a day just to keep it you're, mellow? You're looking at him. <laughs> well, why do you think Chauncey's asleep right now? <laughs> oh, I thought you meant yourself. Yeah, well, <laughs> no. I mean, no, uh, keeps us I don't, calm around the house. I don't, I don't think I would. No. So these guys are really loyal, right? And they don't shed. What's up with the balls? Do I got to play with those? Yeah, four times a day. <laughs> mm, let me think about That's that. That's why we cut them off. Man, that is why we cut them off. Um, so um, uh, I, I, I do think that um, the idea of, uh, you know, the emergency call, the the calm under pressure, that, that's always fascinating to me. You hear yeah. these stories of, of someone being able to do this. We did get a text uh, on the KQ talking text line, 65198 on Rock. Yeah, I could land most planes. My dad was a World War II fighter pilot, then was a Minnesota flying game warden and crop duster for 34 years. He taught me how to fly when I was 11. Okay, well, then well, let, yeah. I'll, I'll travel with you, cowboy. Yeah. Make right. no mistake about it. Yeah, you know your way around a cockpit a bit. I mean, you've got, uh, you understand the language and yep. uh, the basic workings of getting up and down and one of those things. Okay, fair well, enough. The, yeah, they're, they're, for sure. I mean, I'll take that guy over, you know, anybody that's like, well, like the next text, I know how to fly and land an F-14 Tomcat. I played <laughs> Sega's Afterburner when I was oh, a kid. Oh, right. yeah, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take that all day. Top Gun, baby.
Um, I'm trying to think of like what situation have I been in where there really was a, a scary moment. You had to think on your feet and you had to make sure everything was okay. And um, I'm, I'm like, yeah, there's been moments when that's happened. And then I'm like, what were they? And I'm like, uh, maybe not. Maybe <laughs> I, I'm trying to kind of draw a blank here. Mm. Um, you know, Chauncey got Chauncey got clipped uh, by a bus earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the second it happened, I was able to scoop him up and very calmly, I walked into the house and I, I did I did go into mode there. I was like, got to get him to the vet right now. This is just stay calm. Don't freak out. Because, yeah. of course, I wanted to freak out. <laughs> but but that's just me and a dog. And I knew he hadn't been run over. He just got kind of sideswiped. It was yeah. obvious he was okay. A little dinged up. But, you know. Uh, I'm just again a plane man. I, I flew la- Rosemary and I flew week before last to go visit our daughter in college, and I told you we had a fly around, a go around. Yeah. As as the plane was just about to land, the pilot, for whatever reason, decided no, we're not, and he just gunned it straight up, and we had to circle around for ten minutes. And just on that go around right there, just when you when anything unexpected happens on a plane, yeah, I'm like, no, I I don't think I'm the guy for this. <laughs> I mean, I'd go sit with. If somebody says, I think I can right. fly a plane, I will go sit next to them and try to just give them a pep talk. No, I really <laughs> would. Like, you dude, anything? you got this, man. You yeah. got this. You're the Need guy. Water? You're going to yeah. be great. You're going to be great. Grab their forehead like a surgeon, you but, know, make but, sure the sweat doesn't get in their eyes. Yeah, exactly. But put the joystick in my hand, forget it. Yeah, no, I don't think anything like that. I think the closest I came, 2002, we were snowmobiling out in Wyoming, I believe it was. And Benny, my buddy, uh, overserved. We were bar hopping and puked in his helmet. And could not get his helmet <laughs> off. That strap underneath was okay. a little tricky. Yeah, I sure. got his helmet off for him. That a boy. Yeah, I'm just That's saying. pretty strong. Pretty cool under fire. Now, Tony, you you rescued like what was it? It was like 36 orphans from that fire. You, that must have been. Yeah, I, I don't need to talk about that. I don't need that praise <laughs> yeah. and he shine the, the spotlight on me. Smoking. But the cool, what, what's that? <laughs> I said he's the one that fell asleep smoking. <laughs> <laughs> but talk about talk about grace under pressure. I mean, my gosh, that was impressive. No so, elevators. Just up and down, eight flights of stairs. Now like they're that. expecting me to pay for their college. That's, uh, <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, you always, you always got to double check. Wait, One good I, deed. Who am I saving here? What's happening? <laughs> just want to make sure I know what I'm getting myself into. The calm and cool Tony Lee. Yeah. You know that kid, uh, Sam Dutcher, that we had, had that piece of audio last week? That's right. 130 miles an hour up there near Fargo or wherever it was and ran into a cop car. I could do that at 130 miles an hour, run into a state trooper's car if it I was think, all set up. Yeah, uh, yeah. driving a car that suddenly the brakes don't work, I I give myself a, a, an absolute slugger's chance to get out of that one, okay? Yeah, right. You know, because I've, well, I mean, I've been driving cars since like the 80s. I feel like at this point I could probably think on my feet a little bit, but um, uh, but 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 that kid as again, like you said, he was 18. That's impressive for an 18-year-old. That is pretty impressive because, yeah, you think you just would have freaked out at some point or tried to do something stupid and rolled that sucker going 130 miles an hour. Could you imagine a little twist of that wheel and then you wouldn't well, stop rolling until you got into the next county? This, by the way, is Sam Dutcher along with the deputy, Johnson, I guess. Faster than we thought it was. I'm starting to go, I'm going to die tonight. Yeah, I'll try to get in front of you and add a little extra brake power. Probably 130. I know squad tops out around 140, so probably somewhere in that range. Yes, run into the back of his car. I don't think I did anything special. Really, I think what it comes down to is I just had the fastest car and was able to get in front of him. That was Trooper Groover, I guess. Trooper Groover. Trooper Groover. Uh, we got a runaway car. You have to go get in front of him, and you have to let that kid ram into you and then use your brakes to stop both. <laughs> yeah, cool. Great. They, I learned this in State Trooper Academy, <laughs> or right? not. All right. <laughs> so that's pretty good stuff right there. Top five at nine. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. You're listening to the KQ Morning Show. Steve, Zepp, Tony, and Ryder on 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Monday, October the 7th. Good morning. Ho, baby. As we are rolling along, I just thought I'd take another moment to say thanks to everybody that came up to Cragen's on Gold Lake over the weekend. We had ourselves what they call a good old-fashioned blowout. 
Yeah, it is. Every time you go up there, you're thinking, I'm, I'm going to do this every weekend next summer. But I'm just glad we got up there with uh, just some really cool folk. Thank you, Hoffman Weber. And, of course, Craigan's Resort was fantastic. They had a little Oktoberfest uh, bar hop around the oh, lake. Oh, that's there. right. Yeah. Everybody getting dressed up and having a good time. But, yeah, that's about as good as it gets right up there. That certainly is as good as it gets. Right now, it's time for your top five at nine. Here's the stories you need to know. Nine injuries reported. Nine injuries from the Gophers game on Saturday. Not to the players, but to fans <laughs> because they stormed the field. Why? Because the Minnesota Gophers beat the USC, the Southern Cal Trojans ah, Damn, number at 11 home. rated it, too. Man, uh, trying to make sense of the USC and the Big Ten, forget it. I mean, I still yeah. can't. But, but hey, you're going to come to the Midwest, you're going to get your ass kicked, apparently. Yeah, I like it. That's a good ass kick. And I am going to call out the student section, however. Uh, we saw, what, seven top 25 upsets. Welcome to the portal. Tons. Port crazy weekend of college yeah, football. Welcome to the portal area era. And, of course, Vanderbilt taking down number one, Oof. Alabama. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but they tore down the goalpost there at Vanderbilt Stadium, as you do, and marched it to the Columbia the River? Cumberland Columbia, River. Cumberland, that's it. Uh, the, I should know. Vanderbilt but, University is just west yeah. of downtown in Nashville. Right. Uh, you get on a street called West End. That, but West End is what you is becomes Broadway. Broadway in Nashville is like the, that's where all the, the honky-tonks are. The yeah. strip, the mm -hmm. Ryman, the arena. Every, that's that's Broadway. Parties, yeah. At the end of Broadway is a little something called the Cumberland. Cumberland River. That's at the big old and, Cumberland River. And so, yes, Vanderbilt, for the first time since 1984, beat Alabama. Alabama ranked number one in America before yeah. the kickoff. They, um, and for the record, I mean, the Vanderbilt Commodores, when was the last time you heard those words and <laughs> thought, they have a football team? Because uh, trust me, most years, that's what you think. Um, in case anyone's wondering, how far is it from Vanderbilt's football stadium to the Cumberland River to march an entire goalpost to then deposit it? 2.6 miles. That's they, impressive they navigating. The goalpost, first of all, down Broadway on a Saturday night. I don't even know how you accomplish that, but almost three miles to dump it in the river. Yeah. We salute you. By the way, U of M kids, just so you know, uh, for the next big upset over there at Huntington Bank Stadium, it's 0.6 miles to the Mississippi. Straight down Oak. Just and, come you know, on, then guys. over the park there, down the hill, yeah. you get your momentum going and dump her right there in the river. Well, if I mean it is, it is Big true. Now, now USC was not anywhere near number one ranking, but still, it's it's Eleven. Southern Cal. It's yeah. a big, uh, you know, it's a, let you know that go for schedule. Uh, let's see if they. I mean, may, you know, maybe if they get the, do they have the Buckeyes at home? Uh, I'm just trying to think who would be worthy of dumping a goalpost into the Mississippi River. Well, hell, if you beat the Buckeyes at home, that would be the one. Or Michigan. Yeah. yeah. Nah. Well, nah, not this year. Okay, never mind. Right. Maybe, maybe Penn State. That's a top five mm, team maybe. right now. We'll see. But that was a pretty strong effort from the Gophers, a stronger effort from the Vanderbilt students. Uh, you know, one thing, uh, no, no, hey, no disrespect. We're just saying, come on, guys. If yeah, that, just giving you some grief. You know, it, but Big you know, win. I love it. Crazy, absolutely insane. Um, here's, our, here's a little science tip for the day. Number four in your top five at nine. In case you're wondering about... Um, you know, uh, animals, and, and let's just talk about the theory of evolution and the fact that an animals evolve over centuries to make their living situations better for them. I mean, giraffes, at some point, a giraffe's neck probably wasn't that long. Yeah. They were like, you know, if I could just reach those top tree tops, I could get that nice pretty leaf <laughs> up there or something. You know, the monarch <laughs> butterfly is like, I got to... I got to evolve and give myself better markings so that I don't, I don't know. I forgot. I never paid attention <laughs> in class. But animals do evolve. The wombat. Are you familiar with the wombats from down under, Ooh, Mike? Wombats are just a weird sort of land mammal. They don't really offer much to the eye. They're not cute like a koala. They're not weird like a kangaroo. They don't have those bad attitudes and sharp teeth like a dingo, Mike. It's just a wombat. But wombats do have one thing that I do believe is amazing, and that's the ability to to twerk their predators to death. So uh, the, the wombat has a den. It's got a narrow opening in like a rock wall, and it runs in their head first, leaving its ass exposed. The yeah. predator then takes a bite of the wombat's thick cartilage-based <gasps> ass, and while it's clamped in, the wombat starts twerking, and it slams the predator's head into the ceiling oh, of the opening. You saw that coming. It's a bad date. <laughs> uh, yeah, make no mistake. That is a... That is a <laughs> 
perfect, you know, analogy to, you know, I mean, tr- trust me when I say, uh, ladies, you you can kill a man the same way very easily. I mean, give it a shot anyway. Down in North Carolina, uh, Tennessee, uh, and even as far down as Florida, an awful lot of people are really reeling after the last hurricane ahead of another one on the way. Milton is in the Gulf of Mexico right now, and it's going to smash into the west coast of Florida this week. This is an awful time for countless communities. And uh, Molson Coors, as well as a lot of uh, smaller local breweries all throughout the area, are switching their facilities from beer to water. Hundreds of thousands of cans of water being delivered throughout the affected area. Uh, just want to say nice job to all the breweries Absolutely. down there. Yeah. Asheville, North Carolina is a brewery-rich environment. Yeah. Uh, several of those breweries were underwater. The ones who were safe uh, are all doing the same thing. It's a, it's a great idea, and it's just nice to know. You know, remember five year, four years ago, a lot of companies switched to making hand sanitizer. You know, all of a sudden you're yeah. hearing all that. Oh, yeah. uh, this is probably a little easier switch, but for all the breweries who are out there just producing, and, and breweries from around the country are doing the same. A lot of people just shipping water. Man, there's nothing better you could be doing, uh, you know, because as you said earlier, Zep, I mean, really, how hard is it to get from Coors Light to a, to water? I think it's just changing the label. <laughs> I, 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 well, I think there's some cheesecloth involved, but that's it. <laughs> a little one, a, strainer one more time yep, and you got yourself some water there. Well, that's pretty much all it is. Coors Light. Banquet for me. Thank you. I like a little beer flavor. Sure. Yeah. Just a little. In my can. Just a little. Yeah. Uh, high school kids, number two on your top five at nine. High school kids in certain parts of Minnesota, the United South Central District, teachers have been uh, tr- struggling with cell phone use in school. They're I watching bet. their kids, the zombies just staring at their screens. And it's happening in class, but it's also happening in the hallway. Kids are looking down, walking, bumping into each other. There's a conflict. Phones are keeping kids from getting to class on time. They're keeping kids from focusing on school. So... The uh, the United South Central District said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go get those pouches, those yonder pouches like they have at comedy clubs and certain concerts. Yeah. And we're going to pay for a ton of them, and we're going to make our kids turn in their phones at the beginning of the school day. Isn't that just like Minnesota? They want to pay their way out of it instead of just being the tough love. Where's the tough love we grew up with? Right here in Minnesota, by the way, no less. But, um, yeah, just tell them to knock it off. But the yonder pouches, though, you know, this reminds me, I'm not going to pick on the school district where my girls went. I think most people knew, uh, but they were having trouble with kids and P.E. They didn't want to play kickball anymore. Yep. They couldn't play dodgeball anymore, so they went out and bought them all dance pads. You know those dance pads you stand on and you dance oh, and you follow on. the dance? Yeah, they went out and bought like 200 dance pads, and then I know that fall it was like, would you... Would you vote for the levy for a few more bucks? I'm like, we're buying freaking dance pads for the kids. Just make them, you know, yeah. stand there and mm-hmm. throw balls at them till they dance. But anyway, it's got to be a problem. But uh, how else are they going to get their homework done if they don't have their phones in school? <laughs> it seems... How are they going to answer the questions? Um, a lot of the students are saying they're, they're, they're not happy with it, as you might expect. But a lot of parents, and this is the real problem, the school probably would be happy to say, don't bring your phones to school. That's it. You're there's a violation. Yeah. It's the parents who can't stand the notion of not being able to reach their children immediately. Now, again, we do live in a time where it's not, uh, we, we're no longer surprised. We're horrified and we're astounded, but we're not shocked when we hear about something like a school shooting. I understand right. a parent like, hey, I like having that lifeline to my kid. I get that. But that said, the idea of, uh, you know, it, it just the parent, you know, when you tell a kid you don't have every right in the world to do what you want, a lot of their parents get involved and go, oh, who are you to tell yeah, my kid anything? That's an um, issue. You know, we had the helicopter parents. Now, what do they call it? Lawnmower parents. They mow down everything <laughs> in their kid's way because it's oh. important that the next generation of adults be completely incapable of doing anything. Maybe an AI kid for those parents. Just get them an AI kid would be perfect. I did read in that article that you're referring to about these, uh, what are they called again? These uh, little pouches? They're, the, uh, they're called yonder pouches. The yonder you pouches. stick your phone in it and it just shuts it down. Yeah, where they're using them, the kids are starting to interact again, starting to chat. They're hearing laughter in the yeah. cafeteria and hallways. <laughs> Seems like an important component to school. It What's does. Th- yeah, making out in the hallway was why I was late to class all the time, so <laughs> yeah, let's see? keep going with that. Where would I be without that wedgie that the Eichstead <laughs> brothers love to serve up every day? 
Hold on, Joe. What's that noise I hear? It's the sound of children's laughter. <laughs> Does anyone oh. remember laughter? <laughs> oh, my God. Hold on. Open the bunker. Maybe the radiation has cleared. <laughs> <laughs> Number one on your top five at nine. Holy smokes. Who is 5-0? and oh? The Minnesota stinking Vikings. Uh, in London yesterday, the Vikings um, got an early lead, thank goodness, uh, and were able to hold out the New York Jets. Aaron Rodgers led New York Jets. Uh, Vikings with a win. Thank that defense for sure. Brian, Brian Flores has the best defense in the league uh, through five games. Um, uh, and, of course, Andrew Van Ginkle, he of the pick six, had another one yesterday. Van Ginkle. That was pretty strong right yeah. there. To pick off Aaron Rodgers is one thing. To get a pick six is a whole other thing. Aaron Rodgers is the least intercepted quarterback of the modern era, percentage-wise. And he threw a boatload of them yesterday. I believe three times That's right. the Vikings picked him off. That's right. All right, here we have, and that kicker got the job done as well, that rookie. Oh, Reichert is, uh, kid's got an absolute cannon for a leg. Yeah, Alabama, I think they got him in the sixth round, and it's working for him. O'Connell with the game ball. Hey, fellas, let me tell you something. All right, this is the National Football League. Five up, five down. Give it up for yourself. All right, when it's a sloppy game, points ain't ringing up for your offense all day. You got to rely on a couple things. First and foremost, you got to rely on a cold-blooded dude that's going to walk out there and hit three points from wherever I ask him. Yeah. 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 They didn't throw the beep in there. Coach O'Connell going with a strong language. Got to like that. Yeah, I like it. 5-0 and oh, uh, on a bye, and then we'll find out in this north mm-hmm. how they stack up. This will be the big test of the season for sure uh, with the Lions. Uh, the the bye is coming at a good time because they are starting to get a little dinged up. And also an extra week for the special teams to figure out their situation. There were some real boners yesterday. Yeah. Um, a, a ridiculous illegal block in the back after a punt returner had already turned the corner. And then, of course, they allowed a long punt return. And the uh, the uh, roughing the kicker call, which was a joke. Yeah. If anything, it's Jesus, touching the kicker. But that call. But if you're looking for if you're looking for an Achilles heel right now, special teams needs to be tightened up. Hopefully, Aaron Jones comes back in a couple weeks because when he went out of the game yesterday, the offense truly uh, went a little ramshackle for they never really got their mojo back without Aaron Jones. And also, of course, uh, Sam Darnold, who a couple times had tweaked the knee, he took a big shot to the ribs in the first quarter. He was not the same the rest of the game. So yeah. he's a little he. He was the announcers never mentioned it. They literally were like, "Hey, he flew another pass." I'm like, Do you "Remember when they took him off the field? Right, and he looked like he'd been shot in the chest. I mean, yeah. my God, the guy's in pain. Right, they were just they. It was, it was a weird, weird thing that they just kept talking about it. Like, I can't believe he's missing these receivers. I'm like, he's got broken <laughs> ribs or something. When What's he was wrong? down on all fours, did you guys too go? Ah, well, there goes oh, the season. Oh, yeah, that right was away. fun. Right yeah. away. Yeah, that was that was not uh, not not calming at all. A little disconcerting. So week off at the right time. Um, you know what? The Scorpions are heading back to Vegas. The Scorpions. Oh, that band from Germany that was formed in 1965. Yeah, coming home to Vegas. 60 years of the Scorpions residency. It opens February 27th at Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino. You can score a trip for two with round trip air, a two night stay, tickets to opening night, and more. Text the national keyword drums to 95819 for a chance to win. That's drums to 95819 for a chance to win. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. A lot of songs fade out the way Sultan's Swing does. That's one of those ones, though, when you're listening to it and it fades, you think, Oh, they just kept playing for like an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there, there, there was no stopping it. At some point, the engineer's like, guys, guys, we got enough. We got more than enough, fellas. Yeah. It's only two sides to this album. Bring it back. <laughs> it is uh, Monday, October the 7th, and I think it's a perfectly good time to say good morning to our friends out in Excelsior. Oh, Excelsior is yeah. a lovely little town. Don't so you think? if you're on the east side, you have Stillwater. If you're on the west side, you have Excelsior for all mm-hmm. that good, lovely lakeside entertainment and yeah. history. And- Rosemary and I have uh, have been out there a couple times. There's a great bookstore right on the main drag, and then we rented an electric boat in Excelsior. Oh. <laughs> Went out on Minnetonka. The guy goes, oh, if you can rent a go- if you 
can handle a golf cart, you can handle this. And I was like, let's put it to the test. <laughs> Just a little electric silent boat tooled around. Nothing better. No, no, nothing better. Sounds nice. Yeah, it was very, very nice. And a lovely, a lovely spot out there in Excelsior. Um, if you're trying to figure out what to get your friend who has everything and who loves really difficult hobbies, the world's smallest Rubik's Cube is available. <laughs> That's right. The, no, d- take something that's just a headache waiting to happen and make it even smaller. I'm just trying to think if I gave this to any one of my friends. The fully functional six-sided puzzle cube. It's being uh, produced by a Japanese toy maker called Mega House. It can fit under a fingernail. You need what? tweezers, special tweezers to solve it. Listen, it costs $5,300. <laughs> It is made from aluminum. It is 0.19 inches wide. Gotcha. 0.19 inches tall and 0.19 inches long. That's about 0.2 inches across. It is one one thousandth the size of an original Rubik's Cube. Mm-hmm. How pissed off would you be if someone got you that gift, spent 5000 bucks on you, and it was that? I'd swallow I- it just to spite them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no kidding. Pick it out of this corn log, dude. <laughs> um, God, that sounds agonizing. Absolutely, but but anybody who would want that, yeah. I mean, yeah. what what that tells me is that guys, if, if you're walking around with the world's smallest Rubik's cube, you're you're you got a macro penis. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not afraid or concerned with anything. You're like, uh-huh. yeah, check this out. This is how I'm spending my time. Use there is a pickup line. Something seriously wrong with that. I can't imagine. I've uh, the Rubik's cube is uh, is been around for fifty years or since it's. Or, I mean, it it blew up in the states after it yeah. had been around four or five years in Europe. But it's a fifty year anniversary thing coming up. Fifty years of Rubik's cube. You can give me fifty more. I'm never gonna get it. No, I do Ooh. remember seeing that. That was my first introduction to. Oh, the smart kids will eventually rule the world. Absolutely. I see the bullies and the tough kids. We yep. get this. Uh, I shouldn't say we. I was a scrawny little kid. I was definitely get, but I wasn't a nerd. I was a tweener in there somewhere. But yeah, the bullies get to about eighteen. Mm-hmm. Then after that, the kids that can solve yeah. that Rubik's cube in a hurry, they get the rest of the time. Um, I I got one side, and then about three weeks later, I got two sides, and then it's been forty five years, and I still can get two sides <laughs> yeah. of a Rubik's cube. Yeah, and it's just a whole other side of the brain that that I. It's not not the side of the brain that doesn't work. It's the side of the brain I didn't get. <laughs> right. Make no mistake about that. Get the KQ Morning Show podcast wherever you listen. Ninety two KQRS.